Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our public information session on the upcoming referendum uh, for the city of Fitchburg. Thank you so much for being here to discuss this important topic for our community. Again, specifically, as I mentioned earlier, the operating referendum the city of Fitchburg will have on its uh, ballot November 5th. My name is Chad Brecklin and I serve as a city administrator here in Fitchburg. In my role as city administrator, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the city and for implementing the policy directions of the mayor and common council. During our time this evening, we'll plan to walk through some slides that provide an overview of the city's challenges, the referendum itself, and the impacts of a vote for or against. Following the presentation, we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers. It is our hope this evening that you walk away from our discussion with answers to any questions you may have, and that you, inf you feel informed as you head into the voting booth next week. Prior to the presentation, I want to acknowledge the elected officials with us uh, this evening. Uh, Mayor Arata Frada is here, as well as Alder Jim Wheeler, uh, who is a District 4 Alder. So moving into the slide presentation, what is this referendum all about? The City of Fitchburg has identified a need for additional funding to increase staff capacity and invest in services to meet the increasing needs of our growing community. This is a topic we've been exploring as a community for many months. Uh, in particular, we began this discussion through our public meetings, Common Councils, Committee of the Holes, uh, back in January, I'm sorry, back in June of 2023. We've done a number of things throughout the conversation uh, with our Common Council through these public meetings. Uh, an options assessment report was released earlier this year in the spring. Uh, identifying the needs uh, within our community and uh, why we were moving to referendum. In addition, a community-wide survey was sent to all residential addresses in the city, uh, providing an opportunity for our residents to offer feedback for the Common Council to use as they made this very important decision. As we've shared throughout the entire process, the city of Fitchburg is a growing community and the demand for services, including public safety and other core municipal services, continues to increase. In the chart behind me, you can see one measure of our growth. Between 2013 and 2023, Fitchburg's population has increased nearly 34%. For context, the growth in the city of Fitchburg significantly outpaces the population growth of the state of Wisconsin during the same time period. The state of Wisconsin uh, growth during that time period has been right around 3% versus the 34% here as mentioned in the city of Fitchburg. You'll see that the population growth is represented in the green line in this chart. The blue line in the chart represents the growth in city staffing during that same time period. That growth has been approximately 19% and has not kept pace with the city's growing population. When you look at public safety services, let's start with the fire department. Between 2013 and 2022, calls in the Fitchburg Fire Department increased by nearly 40%. You can see that represented in the green line in the chart. The blue line represents the change in staffing that the City of Fitchburg Fire Department has had during that same time period. Largely, you can see that the decline in city uh, staffing in the fire department has been due to the decline in part-time paid on call firefighting staff. As the number of calls have increased with the decline in paid on call part-time staff, as well as other factors, average res response times have increased in the community. Longer response times can also be attributed to an additional reliance on mutual aid from other city fire departments. When mutual aid is required, our fire department requests a fire department in a neighboring community to respond until our teams are available to assist. As you can imagine, when a fire department responds from outside the city, it tends to take much longer than it might if fire staff was ref uh, responding directly from our city. This referendum, in addition to uh, additional full-time career firefighting staff, is also requesting funding to provide a base hourly rate increase for 
the part-time staff. The current hourly rate for our part-time firefighting staff is $12 an hour, which was increased during this budget from $9 per hour. And this, funding refer this referendum funding would allow the hourly rate to increase to $15 an hour as a base pay rate. And part-time fire department staff would have the ability to increase that hourly rate through additional training and certifications, as well as length of service with the city. Along the same lines of our fire department, we've seen increasing demand for our public safety services provided by our police department. During the same time period, 2013 to 2022, the city's police department saw a nearly 23% increase in calls for police services. As you can imagine, it becomes, uh, continues to be increasingly challenging to meet our growing public safety demands with the limited public safety staffing uh, capacity currently available. With the challenges of staffing in mind and in the increased demand that our public safety services are having, our police department has applied for and received a federal COPS hiring grant from the United States Department of Justice that would temporarily fund three additional police officers over a three-year period. The grant requires Fitchburg to provide two-thirds of the funding for each of these police officers and would require those officers to be fully funded by the city for at least one year after the grant funds expire. The total funding provided by this grant is estimated at $375,000. Without the additional funding this referendum provides, the police department will likely need to turn down this grant funding and will not be able to hire the three police officers that could be partially funded through the federal grant dollars. The city of Fitchburg also has space needs within its facilities. There was a space needs study conducted in 2014 that identified uh, existing space needs within the police department here at City Hall, as well as anticipated and now current staffing needs in other city departments housed within the City Hall building. The City Council is, is intending to address this space needs issue through the construction of a new police services building. That building is anticipated to begin construction in late 2025 with an estimated completion date in the first quarter of January 2020, I'm sorry, in the first quarter of 2027. The space needs study identified that by moving the police department from City Hall, the vacated space that is currently used by the police department could be utilized by existing departments within City Hall. That would meet the existing space needs within City Hall departments uh, anticipated for the next 15 to 20 years. And a new facility for the police department will allow them to have a space that is designed specifically for providing police services in our community and provide additional space and capacity for the police department itself. The funding requested within this referendum would allow the city to use uh, the referendum to fund the operations of that facility. The operations would include the hiring of a full-time building maintenance custodian person, as well as the operating costs associated with annually uh, running the building, such as utilities, maintenance, and other costs. In addition, uh, the city would set aside a modest uh, reserve in order to repair and or replace uh, building systems as those uh, situations arise in the future. As we all can attest to experiencing, community growth has increased pressure on our traffic roadways and has increased the need for improvements in our transit services. Increased funding to the transit system will allow the city to invest in enhanced transit and paratransit service, which we currently do not have. The paratransit service uh, would be available within three quarters of a mile of fixed routes. The routes that are targeted for improvements as a result of this referendum, if it is approved, are specifically routes 65 and 75. These routes generally work east to west within the city 
and would certainly improve our intercity, or I'm sorry, intracity connectivity between residential areas, job centers, and city facilities such as City Hall, Senior Center, and the library. We currently have Monday through Friday service on both of these routes during peak morning and peak afternoon times. The improvements that the funding in this referendum would allow would increase the frequency of the travel on both routes 65 and 75 and would provide all day service Monday through Friday and evening and weekend service. Specifically that service it would anticipate it to be 60 minutes during the daytime Monday through Friday and 90 minutes service during the evenings and weekends. The City of Fitchburg, its Common Council and staff have been a careful steward of our budget and have done uh, all that we can to make the most out of the tax dollars that you, our community, provide to us. A recent example that I can utilize to demonstrate how careful of our uh, financial steward our Common Council and staff has been relates to a recent uh, visit uh, by an investment firm uh, called Moody's. Moody's rates municipalities when they go to borrow money, and we recently borrowed money for uh, police services, a portion of their police services building project and uh, a small infrastructure project. When Moody's comes to do that rating, they assess many different things, including the financial policies and financial health of the city as it relates to a number of criteria. We are pleased to have learned uh, this spring that Moody's rated the city of Fitchburg uh, AAA which is the highest rating available to municipalities in the state of Wisconsin. Moody's has informed us that we are one of six municipalities in the state that they have rated with a AAA bond rating. This is a culmination of, of over 20 years of work by a number of staff and common council members over that time period to achieve uh, this distinguished rating. It certainly demonstrates our commitment to being financially responsible. Unfortunately, at this point, the needs of our community and the costs associated with addressing those needs have outpaced our current funding capacity and additional dollars are needed to hire public safety and other personnel, address growing operating costs, and invest in transit. Costs have increased, much like in your own situation, due to factors, uh, due to inflationary factors. Some of the things that are directly impacting the city of Fitchburg include the cost, specifically increasing costs to recruit and retain our professional service oriented team, inflationary pressures on equipment, the cost of supplies, materials, and other services, as well as operating expenses associated with maintaining the high level of service our community appreciates. To address these challenges, the city of Fitchburg has placed a referendum on the ballot for November 5th. The referendum will ask voters whether or not they support a $3,593,000 increase in the property tax levy going forward to fund five sworn police positions, six firefighters, three city hall staff members, which are specifically a communications director, a finance manager, and a human resources generalist, police services building operating costs, improvements to public transit, and other city operating costs. I do want to point out that this nearly $3.6 million referendum request is a permanent request. It will uh, continue to be on uh, the property tax levy if approved, beginning uh, with tax bills in December of 2024. You may be asking why we have to go to referendum to fund these solutions. First and foremost, I want to point out this referendum is not necessary due to a financial gap. The Common Council is not seeking to close a current budget deficit with this referendum. This referendum is to add much needed city staff capacity, invest in transit, operate the new police services building, and provide a small operating uh, amount that will be reserved for uh, f future increases to personnel costs. The city's ability to respond to changes in the demands for its services is, restrict is restricted by state legislation. 
Specifically, that state legislation limits property tax levy increases primarily to the percent increase in equalized value from net new construction. The allowable increases based on net new construction alone are insufficient to meet the growing needs of our community. In order to exceed state imposed levy limits, the city must seek approval via a referendum. One of the things that you may ask uh, is what is net new construction? Net new construction is a result of the growth and development that you see in our community. That is the change in the equalized value uh, of the city's property tax base uh, based on every January 1 of each uh, calendar year. So for instance, the uh, equalized value of the city on January 1, 2023 uh, and the change in that value uh, between then and January 1, 2024 equals our net new construction. For our 2025 operating budget, our net new construction was just under 3%, uh, 2.9 specifically. And that net new construction allows us to increase our operating levy, our property tax levy by that course, roughly that corresponding amount, 2.9%. There are a number of other factors that will slightly increase that number, which you'll see uh, later in the slide presentation. But generally speaking, our levy limit uh, and net new construction are tied together uh, significantly and create uh, the city's ability to fund its operations. In the simplest terms, we need net new construction and growth in order to maintain existing staff capacity and services at the levels that they are. If we have, for instance, a 2.9% increase in net new construction to utilize for our 2025 operating budget and inflationary uh, CPI uh, factors of about 3.1% over the last 12 months, you can see that net new construction does not necessarily keep up with the costs of uh, providing existing services. That net new construction that we have for the 2025 operating budget equated to about a $750,000 increase in our levy limit capacity. That levy limit capacity, that additional capacity is used up quite quickly after the city uh, in the proposed budget uh, by the mayor uh, provides a 2% cost of living adjustment for all city employees uh, for 2025. Oh, 1% or each 1% cost of living adjustment for city staff equates to about $200,000 in new funding that is needed. Uh, when you couple a 2% uh, cost of living adjustment along with associated increases in other benefits, uh, employment benefits are provided to employees, namely health insurance and retirement, as well as other increases in things like park maintenance accounts, street maintenance accounts, public safety accounts, and so forth you can see that a robust or rather robust 2.9% net new construction does not necessarily allow the city to do anything other than maintain its existing services in the best case, of, of best case scenario. It simply does not provide enough additional capacity to add uh, staff or other investments in city services. So why now? Well, like many other Wisconsin communities, and you've oftentimes seen school districts uh, as well, growing needs and expenses have outpaced our ability to hire staff, add capacity, and make investments to fund solutions in our community. In order to invest in staffing and fund our growing operating costs to maintain and or in some cases improve existing services, additional funding is now required. Here's the referendum question you'll see on the November ballot. I'll give you a moment to read over it, and then we'll talk further about what this language means. I do want to point out before you begin reading this referendum question that the Department of Revenue requires this to be the question language. We do not have any discretion in how the questions are written, and in fact, we needed to work with our public finance advising firm uh, in order to draft this question and have it approved by the Department of Revenue. Please take a couple of moments to read the question.
Now that you've had a chance to review the question, I'd also like to preview where the referendum will be uh, placed on the ballot. You can see the two ballots that are currently going to be utilized for our residents. The ballot on the left is for residents who do not live in the Madison Metropolitan School District. On that ballot, you will locate the referendum question on the back side of the ballot, so it will need to be flipped over, and you'll find the question in the upper left-hand corner of the back side of the ballot. For any residents who reside in the Madison Metropolitan School District, you will see the ballot style on the right uh, side of your screen. On that ballot, you will also need to flip the ballot over to find the referendum question on the back of the ballot. And again, you will still be able to locate the ball uh, this referendum question in the upper left-hand corner of the second or back side of the ballot. So working our way through the referendum question and exactly what it means, if voters approve the referendum, the city would be able to institute a permanent $3,593,000 $3 increase to the property tax levy beginning with property tax bills issued in December of 2024. This is a one-time permanent increase and the reason I use the word one time is school districts have the ability to escalate, if you will, the uh, referendum that they have on ballots. Uh, they could potentially do referendum that says uh, $3.6 million in year one, an additional $3.6 million in year two, and so forth through the, through the uh, identified term of that referendum. Municipalities do not have that option. Uh, while this is a permanent increase, it is a one-time increase and will not be, an escal will not be escalated uh, in future years. If the referendum is approved, it would translate to a property tax impact of approximately $65 per $100,000 in assessed property value. The impact to a median Fitchburg, uh, Fitchburg single-family home, which is currently valued at $457,000 $800 is estimated to be just under $300 annually and just under $25 per month. We do have a tax calculator on our city website, so anyone that would like to learn what their increased property tax estimate will be if this referendum is passed, you can use this referendum tax cal calculator tool Here's what it looks like, and you can simply type in the assessed property value of your property, and the property tax increase estimation will appear in the blue box to the right. It calculates both annual and monthly impact. As you can imagine, people provide services, and the city's ability to address community priorities has been limited by our staffing capacity. Our current operating budget is approximately two-thirds people. The other one-third goes to the operating expenses associated with providing those services. The City of, of Fitchburg turned to Baker Tilly to perform an operational and organizational review of its, operation, of its staffing levels last year, and we also required our department heads to review current and projected future workloads. These efforts uncovered a need for more than 50 additional city staff members in the coming years in order to provide the staffing capacity departments uh, anticipated. Obviously, the Common Council and city staff recognize it is not feasible to hire 50 additional sta staff members in a short period of time. It will take many, many years to ultimately add 50 staff members to uh, the city departments that, that uh, have identified those staffing needs. The Common Council and city staff used the information provided by Baker Tilly and its department heads to prioritize the top positions that were needed in the uh, nearest term. Those positions are listed here in the referendum and if approved, the city would have funding necessary to address the increased demand for public safety uh, services, and the referendum would allow the city to hire 
uh, much needed public safety staff in the form of three police officers, one police lieutenant, and one police sergeant, as well as six firefighters. The additional staffing in the police department will allow the city to uh, assign a full array of staff to the third shift and fully cover peak service hours with command and other supervisory staff. It will also ensure the city's ability to accept approximately $375,000 in federal grant funding, and it will allow the police department to uh, enhance its community-oriented policing with the re-implementation of neighborhood officers. Hiring six additional full-time firefighters will help maintain and improve our ability to respond to emergencies. It will address staffing vacancies caused by decreasing part-time staff availability and assist in reducing the current practice of relying on overtime and over-reliance of existing career staff, thereby improving our staffing reliability. We currently uh, staff less than 50% of the hours necessary to staff two fire engines 24 hours a day, seven days a week with full-time staff. Think about that. Less than half of the hours that we staff a fire, two fire engines are covered by career firefighting staff. We rely heavily on our part-time staff for this service. These six firefighter positions would allow us to staff approximately 75% of these hours with career firefighting staff. In addition, the funding approved, uh, if approved by this re referendum, will allow the city to pay its part-time firefighting staff a minimum base hourly rate of $15 per hour, which we anticipate will help retain existing part-time firefighting staff and ideally help attract new staff as well. Additionally, the funding in this referendum will allow the city to hire a communications director, a human resources generalist, and a finance manager, which will allow the city to improve its communication and transparency with the community. It will aid our recruitment and retention efforts, uh, which impact the quality and availability of services, anywhere from snow removal to parks maintenance and other public safety services. In addition, management of our financial operations through additional staff capacity in the form of a finance manager will provide additional much needed support for our finance director, and it will pro also provide much needed support to our public works and engineering department. That department specifically, speaking of public works and engineering, uh, is leaned on quite heavily to perform finance related functions uh, in addition to their other tasks and duties associated with their roles. It is anticipated that this finance manager position will take uh, most if not all of the finance related tasks from the public works and engineering departments and allow those departments to focus on tasks uh, that they were uh, hired to do engineer street improvement projects, plow our streets, maintain our parks, those sorts of things. As mentioned earlier, if approved, this referendum would also allow the city to fully fund its public, uh, public uh, I'm sorry, police services building operations. Uh, specifically, that would allow us to hire a building maintenance custodian full-time and would allow us to pay with the annual utilities and set aside a modest reserve to replace and or repair building systems as they are, ne are necessary. We would also be able to improve our transit, uh, specifically increasing the frequency and service on routes 65 and 75. Generally speaking, those are east-west routes within the city, and this would greatly improve our intra-city transit services. Uh, we currently have uh, service that only runs during peak morning and peak afternoon times, Monday through Friday, and this in investment would allow us to have all day service of 60 minutes throughout the day, Monday through Friday, and 90 minute service in the evenings and weekends, and would certainly improve our connection and intra-city intra connectivity to residential areas, job centers, and city facilities such as City Hall, Senior Center, Library. And finally, uh, when looking at this operating referendum, uh, the other operating costs, uh, those would be utilized uh, for uh, 
personnel cost increases. Uh, namely, cost of living adjustments are the most likely uh, use of those funds. As I talked about earlier, a 2% cost of living adjustment uh, equates to approximately $400,000. And you can see that uh, the money set aside in this referendum for that person purpose would not take long to utilize. If the referendum is rejected by a majority of voters on November 5th, the city of Fitchburg and its common council will have to make difficult decisions about how to address the growing and increasing needs for public safety, streets, parks, and other maintenance and operating uh, costs, services related to the senior center, library, communications, and other growing challenges with staff recruitment and retention. A rejected referendum would result, at least for 2025, in maintaining current funding for staffing and municipal services that are currently being provided. Future years become much less certain, and without significant growth in our community, uh, over and above what we have seen historically, or without a significant change in the way in which municipalities are funded, have the ability to raise revenue, or a change in levy limits, the city will likely be faced with a, uh, uh, the challenges of determining what staffing levels and what municipal service levels to reduce. It, without additional funding, Fitchburg will simply not be able to hire the additional staff as outlined, and it will become increasingly difficult to maintain the existing services that we are provided, or we are currently providing. As it relates to the uh, referendum, to summarize, this referendum uh, would fund five sworn police positions, specifically three police officers, one sergeant, and one lieutenant. The addition in our police department would allow the city to accept $375,000 in federal grant dollars that would partially offset the cost of those three police officer positions for three years. It would increase the police department's ability to provide community-oriented policing efforts through additional neighborhood-based police officers, and it would enhance our supervisory and command staff coverage during peak times. The six firefighters and other funding associated with the fire department would allow us to pay our part-time firefighters at least $15 per hour as a base rate it would also add firefighters and allow us to reduce our dependency on part-time uh, firefighters, as well as overtime being uh, overtime shifts by our current full-time staff. And it would allow for approximately 75% of our annual fire engine coverage hours to be filled by full-time staff versus the less than 50% that is currently being covered by our full-time staff. The three non-public safety positions, the communications director, the human resources generalist, and the finance manager positions would all allow the city to improve its communi communications and outreach with residents. It would help recruit and retain staff and provide capacity for day-to-day -day human resources functions. I should add, uh, actually I'll add this point after making the final uh, point in this section, uh, would also allow our engineers to spend more time on infrastructure projects and other engineering and public works related functions versus finance related functions. I should add when talking specifically about our uh, the request for the human resources generalist and the finance manager, we currently have less than three full-time employees in our human resources department and we have 200 full-time employees and approximately 50 to 75 limited term and part-time employees. I hope many of you can see that the capacity of our human resources department certainly does not meet the needs of our uh, 200 uh, employees. I'm sorry, it, it struggles to meet the needs of our 200 employees. And when we look at our finance department and the request for the finance manager, a position was recently added within the last couple of years in our finance department, but prior to that position having been added, it had been the mid-90s uh, since a position other than a part one part-time position had been added in our finance department. So you can see in many cases, 
the growth of the city as well as uh, uh, city staff has not necessarily allowed for the staff capacity that is needed to carry out the functions that are needed in order to operate the city of 35,000 residents that we are. Continuing on in this referendum and what the funding of a referendum would provide, uh, the ongoing police services building operating costs, again, that would allow us to hire a full-time building maintenance custodian, funds building operating costs, such as utilities and maintenance, and builds a modest reserve for future building and mechanical systems replacements. Improvements to our transit and paratransit system, the improvements to Route 65 and 75 from weekday peak hour service to now full day, evening, weekend, and weekday service of varying levels. And most importantly, that would also allow for the uh, uh, additional service of paratransit service within three quarters of a mile of those two routes. And then finally, the other city operating costs, uh, those would be reserved for future personnel cost in, uh, increases. And when you look at this particular referendum, uh, you can see that 66% or two thirds of the referendum is for public safety. 13% is for the other operating costs that will be reserved for future personnel cost increases. 11% is for the three non-public safety staff positions that have been mentioned, and 10% is for the investments in transit. And as a reminder, if this referendum is, is approved, the tax impact is approximately $65 per $100,000 in assessed property value. The impact to a median Fitchburg home, uh, which is currently valued at $457,800, is estimated to be uh, just over $298 per year and just under $25 per month. I do encourage everyone to head to the polls on Tuesday, November 5th to vote on this referendum question. Our polling locations on November 5th will be open from 7 a.m. and will close at 8 p.m. and voters are required to show an acceptable form of photo ID in order to vote. In addition, in-person absentee uh, voting is currently taking place here at the community center, in the Fitchburg room specifically. Uh, that uh, continues through this Friday, November 1st. Additional voting information, including hours and other uh, notable information you may be interested in, can be found on the city's website under the city clerk section or at myvote.wi.gov. Prior to uh, taking questions uh, from those uh, who have questions, I did want to cover uh, at least one or reinforce one question that we've talked about uh, that we have been seeing at, at the uh, public information sessions that we've had. And just as a point of reference, this is our seventh and final public information session on this referendum. Uh, we've had three virtual sessions, including this one, and four in-person sessions that have been hosted at various locations throughout the city. Uh, but one of the common questions that we have received is that the city has experienced a lot of growth and development, and why hasn't that growth covered the positions that are listed in the referendum? Well, I touched upon that a little bit earlier in this presentation, but I want to uh, head back to it and, and uh, discuss it a bit further. So when we are looking at net new construction and that growth and development within the city, we are very fortunate to have that. And as I explained earlier in the presentation, that growth and development is needed simply to maintain the existing services that are provided. We do not have the ability through that growth to do anything other than provide the services that we currently have based upon the, narrow, the, the, the narrowness of our budget or the tightness of our budget. As I stated, approximately two-thirds of our budget is the people that provide the services. That doesn't leave a lot of additional money available uh, based upon our property uh, tax levy limits to provide any new services, improve existing services, or add staff capacity that is needed. If we did not have this growth, we would be looking at a reduction in staff capacity and the services that are being provided in our community currently. It simply would not be possible, financially possible, to maintain existing services without growth and development based upon the levy limit law and how it is structured by our state legislature. 
the referendum that we are uh, that is on the ballot uh, simply is needed to allow the city to add staff capacity that is that it is unable to add through uh, the net new construction and the increase in levy that we are provided. It would also allow us to make some investments in existing services, namely transit, to improve and enhance those services. Absent a state uh, law change that would uh, change the way in which we can calculate our levy limit formulas, um, I do not envision this changing. Uh, there was a change to state law approximately a dozen years or so ago that likely limited uh, uh, that, that limited our ability to make significant changes outside the net new construction. Previously, uh, there had been a, a factor that would allow for inflationary adjustments uh, within the state legislature or state laws uh, related to levy limits. Uh, that was removed. Now we rely uh, nearly exclusively on net new construction to address increasing uh, needs and uh, desires or increases in services. One other common question that we've received at uh, nearly each of the uh, information sessions, and after discussing this one, I'll turn it over to questions from those uh, who are viewing the presentation, relates to the citywide revaluation of all properties that has happened both in 2022 and 2024. Specifically, the question often uh, goes something along the lines of, my property was uh, revalued in uh, either this year and or last year, and I saw my uh, valuation increase 20%. And with that increase in assessed value, where did the additional tax revenue go? Well, you probably may have noticed in your property tax bill that the city portion of that property tax bill generally equates to about a third of that tax bill. There are three other taxing entities within that property tax bill. The school district with which you live in, the uh, Dane County local government, and then the Madison College uh, technical, um, uh, technical government unit or technical taxing jurisdiction. Madison Area Technical College, I guess is how I should best say that, getting a little tripped up with their recent name change. But uh, ultimately speaking, all four of those taxing entities comprise your property tax bill. And generally speaking, in most cases, the city of Fitchburg comprises about one third of that. We recognize that you pay your property taxes to the city of Fitchburg. And what you may not necessarily recognizes that the city of Fitchburg turns over the taxing uh, to the taxing jurisdictions uh, their uh, reflective share of that uh, property tax bill, and we do not uh, have the ability to utilize all of that property tax that you have paid. We only have the ability to use the, the share that was paid to the city of Fitchburg uh, for our share or retained by the city of Fitchburg. With that in mind, what you often see when there is a revaluation is a corresponding change in the tax rate. So ultimately, the tax rate decrease does not increase our, uh, our property tax collections in a corresponding uh, ratio to your reassessed values. If you were to take a look at the last several years of your property tax bill and specifically look at the city of Fitchburg portion of that property tax bill, you will likely notice that the average single family home has generally uh, stayed flat in relation to the portion of its city property tax bills. The levy limits that are in place do not allow the Common Council to increase the property tax revenue collected above certain thresholds, largely constrained by net new construction. Therefore, while your property has been revalued, and I might add that revaluation takes place uh, through the assessing uh, of uh, properties throughout our community, and we are required by state law to have our properties assessed within a certain percentage of fair market value, while those assessed values have increased, there has not been a corresponding increase in property tax revenue collected and that can be utilized by the city of Fitchburg to provide the services that we currently provide. Uh, one of the questions that we've gotten is, uh, 
goes along the lines of, I'm aware that the state legislature did make an adjustment in shared revenue last year. And uh, if that is true, what did the city do with the additional shared revenue that was provided? Uh, that is a true statement. Uh, the city, I'm sorry, the state legislature did make a funding change in the shared revenue uh, formulas. Uh, there had not been any changes made in the shared revenue uh, for funding formulas for more than 20 years. And uh, last year, as a result of the increase in shared revenue, the city of Fitchburg received approximately $800,000 in additional shared revenue funding. Where did that funding go, you may be asking? That funding went to the following sources. It maintained existing services and personnel in our police and fire departments. Specifically, it paid for any uh, cost of living adjustments that were required uh, through their negotiated contracts, as well as uh, addressed any sorts of other costs related to salary benefits and other operational issues or other operational requests uh, as it relates to maintaining existing services within those two departments. We re reclassified two police lieutenants to captains. We also reclassified a record specialist position to an executive assistant position within the police department. We had added an additional career full-time firefighter. We increased the part-time firefighter minimum hourly pay rate from $9 an hour to $12 an hour, and we also increased our roadway supplies and maintenances, maintenance uh, accounts uh, by a slight amount. We are receiving a small increase of approximately $25,000 in uh, this year's supplemental shared revenue payment. And as you can imagine, uh, based on what we've talked about this evening, uh, unfortunately, while we are grateful for the additional $25,000, uh, it is not enough to uh, allow us to address any of the items that are associated with this particular referendum. Another question that we have received, as I'll continue on, as we've had these presentations, is our community is aware that the city has received ARPA, or American Rescue Plan Act funding from the federal government, and has recently closed some tax increment districts which has allowed for some uh, additional funding to have come to the city. What is the city, uh, why isn't the city using those funds uh, for the items included in the referendum is generally the question that we are receiving. Well, there are many types of sources that the city can utilize to uh, fund its operations as well as cover its expenses. Property tax revenue, which is what we're talking about as it relates specifically to this referendum, is the primary uh, source of revenue that's utilized to provide the day-to-day -day operational services that we provide in our community. There are other sources that we use, such as shared revenue, impact and development fees and grants, uh, just to name uh, some others that help us carry out and maintain our services. The ARPA and TID closure funds uh, that we received are one-time funds. These are funds that we are utilizing uh, through the Common Council approval to fund one-time costs. Those costs include things uh, like uh, referendum outreach materials. Those costs include things like uh, reconstruction of the uh, tennis courts at McKee Farms Park. Those costs include things like resurfacing additional streets in our Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative areas. I want to stress that these are one-time funds, and once those funds were, would, are exhausted, they do not exist any longer. And when we're talking about an operational referendum, as we are today with the $3.6 million, those costs are used to operate the city and those costs do not go away year after year after year. If we were to use ARPA or TID closure funds to fund operational items such as people, we would run out of those funds in, no, in, in a very short period of time. 
and we would be creating what's called a structural deficit. That would mean we would have hired people to fill roles and now we don't have the funding available to pay for those positions. And that is not a practice that our Common Council, uh, this Common Council, nor past Common Councils, has been inclined to engage in for good reason. Uh, it would be contrary to uh, financial, sound financial management. So to recap, those funds, ARPA, TID closure, are uh, one-time sources of funding and therefore are not utilized to fund operations as it would create a structural deficit. Not seeing any questions currently, I will transition back to some slides here. I do want to share that there are a number of ways in which the community, I'm sorry, the city com, uh, communicates with uh, our residents and those who are interested. I would encourage you to scan the QR code that's on your screen and that will take you to uh, an area of our website that will allow you to see the many ways in which you can receive information and updates from the city. Uh, one service I would uh, especially like to highlight, besides of course FACT TV, is the Notify Me feature on our website. And that allows you to sign up via email or text message to receive information on things like meeting agendas and other projects and initiatives you might have an interest in. I do want to thank you for your time this evening. If you have any further questions that might uh, arise, I encourage you to contact me. My email address is listed here as well as my phone number, and I'll be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. You may also find a whole host of information that has been added to our website at fitchburgwi.gov backslash referendum. There is a tile there about halfway down on that page that says referendum. Please feel free to uh, click on that link and that will take you to uh, a bunch of information that has been added to our website. I do want to thank those of you who were able to spend some time out of your busy schedule this evening learning more about this referendum. And I hope you have an enjoyable evening. Thank you very much.